This is Damos Agro Allied Venture. The farm sits quietly on a five hectare expanse in Guduba Village, Kude Area Council, one of the satellite towns of Abuja, Nigeria's capital. It's an integrated farm, breeding catfish, pigs, and chickens for eggs and meat. Having remained in business for over 14 years, Damos currently boasts of five pens, housing a total of 4,000 broilers and 6,000 layer birds, housed in battery cages for egg production. What's more, Damos has a mill from where it produces adequate feed for its livestock, many thanks to the intervention of the Bank of Industry. The mill ensures the production of requisite mix of raw materials for producing high-quality feed to guarantee quality eggs and livestock. I met with the managing director of Damos, Mr. Augustin Agorua, on the farm. Before we eventually settled down under a pen, the chief promoter conducted us round the facility. Wow. Wow. Actually, nine, 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 nine. Come on, I think we lost that one. In discussing the impact of the Bank of Industry on the enterprise, Mr. Gura tells me the story of Damos is a long and winding serial entrepreneurial curiosity that culminated in farming. Damos started many, many years ago. Damos started while I was an undergraduate. I started to do some small business based on monies from friends and family. Actually, what got me in on this line was that I actually started a restaurant as an undergraduate. And that restaurant taught me one lesson that a lot of people plan to eat, <laughs> surprisingly people plan to eat and so they make a budget for food and once people make a budget for food they pay for their food so while that restaurant was on two things happened I noticed that to be able to cook for people I needed inputs and those inputs were sometimes difficult to get I couldn't understand why they said there was ugu everywhere there was um, vegetables everywhere and every week I wanted to buy there was a competition to buy them and the same thing for meat and the same thing for chicken so he opened another line of business for me. Though my core business initially was the restauranting business, I realized that I was tending towards realizing how could I not have what I wanted when I wanted them, and at the time I wanted them. So by the time I graduated, that was when the boom of catfish farming and all that started. I want to believe that you had quite a number of options uh, in terms of investors uh, who would help you when you wanted to start the business. How did you end up with the Bank of Industry? First of all, the commercial banks um, lent at very high rates and don't have enough to be able to give you what you want for the time. Agriculture is not trade. You don't sell and recover money, so you need to invest and there's a waiting period. And most commercial banks are not willing to give you that waiting period for you to start paying back. So initially we started with some government funded schemes that give that, that opening where we had the CBN schemes 
for agriculture. From those CBN schemes, they now map Tomofost into getting to find out that Bank of Industry actually does finance not just industry like their name is, but they also finance agriculture and production and even. So that's how I stumbled into because we're looking for at what you call financing that is designed and tailor-made for farming. So with a good moratorium, with a long tenor, that you'll be able to actually make an investment and recoup your investment and pay back your loans. Well, that's how I, I stumbled into BY. What's the story of Damos? How did you start? Um, our story is a pretty long story. First of all, um, I got there and I had to meet a, what you call their business service development person who could help me build up the business plan and the whole business and to be able to relate to BOI what I wanted and capture how they would be able to help finance the business. And that was a long process. The process of finally saying, this is what, these are the, these are the options that they have. There's a micro, very micro level scale, then there's a small, and then there's a macro. So we all got down to the fact that the SMEs is what I can be able to access as a starter at this time. But that process was not an easy process. From the point where we began the process, I kept on, they kept on making demands for the prerequisites they have already asked for. And I went through that whole process. And I told myself, I'm going to ensure that I get all these things out. The truth was that they kept on encouraging me that this process is real. Be patient, keep going through it. I told them we're going from one farming season to another farming season. Can't you see that if I don't get it now, it'll be difficult to do this. They just said, look, keep planning, keep organizing, keep investing this will come through at some point. And finally one day, I provided all the requirements that they had, and they told me that I'd been given an offer letter. I said, wow, is that an offer letter? What's the structure and focus of the intervention? The loan was, to, was structured in, in, in two phases, or in bits. First, to finance the cages that would take the birds to the ground. What's the size of the cage? We have um, 40 units of cages, 4,000 bed spaces, actually. So that's what they were financed to do, 4,000 bed spaces for that. So that's what you have there in that pen already set up. And now the process is we provide a, um, a vendor or a, someone who makes cages. BOI actually goes into a partnership with them to ensure that they provide these cages. They provide the cages. I certify that the cages are good and then BOI pays them for the cages. And that's how the, the, um, the arrangement works out. Same for for the birds, same for the feet. For the birds, we got um, a veterinary doctor who is qualified to be able to get, go to the companies themselves who provide these birds, bring in these birds. We actually stock 4,200 birds to, to create room for mortality while we're raising them so that we have, at the end of the day, a batch of 4,000 to be able to stock. And then they also provided feed. Because we already have a feed mill in this farm, we didn't want finished feed. We wanted, designed it in such a way where we can actually process our own feed, which will be better for us. So we also got a vendor who could supply the materials for the feed, which is what you already see in the maize, the soya, and the other micronutrients that are required, and the concentrates. So that's what we have. And so every now and then, as is required, we mix up the feed to feed the birds. So from right on now, we have all the feed, BOI finance, all the feed that is requisite to feed these birds till they come to maturity and start producing the required results that they are geared towards producing. So that's how we are. Okay. So really, the money, like they say, the, I don't get, we don't, POI does not try, within this scheme, they try not to actually give money per se. They provide what you actually want them to provide, and that's how this was structured out. <laughs> Which of the BOI funds did you benefit from? There's the BOI core fund, because at the beginning of the process, they were, we were told the different categories that were there. There was a Dangote fund, there was a CBN fund, there was actually a BOI fund at different interest rates. So while the process was on, we were able to see whether we could access the BOI Dangote fund. But that, within the system, they were able to organize that, and that's what they were working with, the BOI Dangote fund. So I'd like you to describe to me what the impact of the intervention has been on your business. Though at the beginning, throughout the process, it was sometimes a tiring process, but it's, 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 it's come to fusion. And like 
every farmer, this is, for me, the process was like, this is the harvest for a BOI process, but this is actually the beginning of the farming process. And so at this juncture, I'm happy and I'm, I'm glad the relationship was able to get to this point. And the greater part is that it's going to get bigger as we go because like the last time they were here, the chicks were just day old. Now you see, you know, they're growing and it's real and it's actually functioning. And one come back in another few months, they'll be in the cages. And another few months, you see eggs. Another few months, you know, the whole process keeps growing and growing and growing and growing at least. And that's my passion to see that thing that didn't exist start and then develop to become something that everybody can appreciate. So what's the big picture for Damos? The big picture is for Damos one day to become a major player in providing food for Nigerians in whatever way we can. At some point in the future for Damos, we'll be providing even farming the raw materials that we need to feed the birds. For the, for the pigs that we just started, it was, it was an experiment to find out. The whole of Asia is going pork. And I asked myself, why is Asia doing that? It's the fastest way to feed it a rising population. The, those things are huge. They're good. And as you grow them, you see that once population keeps increasing, we have to find a way to feed ourselves. There's no way Nigeria will keep moving forward without us feeding ourselves. We can't get people feeding us. And we have good land, we have good temperature, we have good weather, we have everything that is, God has blessed this country with to be able to take care of ourselves, at least give ourselves our own food to eat. And I want to be a big player at that in the near future. Do you have any concerns whatsoever that maybe at some point you may not be able to fulfill your obligations to the bank of industry? Are there any threats? Usually, because I'm one person who likes to see a process out in my head and on paper before I engage, that's part of the whole arrangement towards having the relationship with bank of industry. We sat down with the account officer, we sat down with the state manager, we looked at the repayment process. We looked at all the worst case scenarios. We looked at all the risk elements and said, look, we're going to structure this out. They give me a tenor. It's a three-year tenor with a six-month moratorium. So within that same tenor, we checked in all what could go bad, what can go wrong, and what can be done to mitigate those things. So that's part of the process. For me as a farmer, that's really where my, my juices come out. If this goes bad, what do I do next? So there are fears, but part, that's part of the planning process. That's part of the whole planning process for the structuring of the loan. To be able to get a moratorium that gives you room to develop and to get a tenor that gives you ability to actually raise the birds in that same process. And if anything go wrong, raise the birds again and give you that same time to raise it again. And that's the beauty of the BOI Bank of Industry relationship. Welcome back from Abuja and Kaduna. BOI continues to support businesses that engage in manufacturing and processing activities, either in agro-processing, solid minerals, information technology, oil and gas, and the creative industry, just to name a few. Make a move today and let the Bank of Industry support you. Visit any of their offices closest to you or log on to their website at boi.ng. Remember... You can apply for BOI loans online. Simply download the BOI SME loan app from the Google Play Store and follow the instructions. Feel free to tweet at me at KAY Alliant Aid for further inquiries. You can watch previous editions of the program on YouTube.com by typing BOI Weekly in the search area. And that's our show for today. Many thanks for watching. I'm Kaede Alliant Bye now.